Rock and Roll Geek Show 747. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online uh, uh, since 2004, right. it's the one and only yeah. Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Wednesday, December 7th, 2016, when I'm recording this show, and it's 6.52 p.m. This is a very special episode of the Rock and Roll Geek Show, one that uh, the donors and Patreon people are not getting charged for because Chris Capel, my uh, good friend of the Rock and Roll Geek Show, is paying for this episode. He's a co-host donor tonight. I, if you if you uh, don't know, I have a, uh, the show survives on donations. Without your donations, this show would die a horrible, putrid, stench-filled, stepping in dog shit, uh, dead squid on the kayak, death. And uh, one of the levels of donations I have, if you donate $100, you get to co-host the show with me, and I'll be your sidekick, and you get to play all the, all the music is your music, and I just sit here and act like a douchebag, and um, you get to co-host. Well, I'm, I'm the douchebag co-hosting with, uh, I'm, I'm the douchebag sidekick of Chris Capel tonight. How you doing, Chris Capel? I, I cannot hear you now. Hey, I'm just a co-host. This is Chris Capel. This is his uh, technical difficulties. He gets to take the blame. Are you there, Chris Capel? Uh-oh. Chris Capel, do you read me? This is Michael Butler of the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Come in, come in, Chris Capel. Are do you, you there? Me? I read you loud and clear. <laughs> Out and clear. Right. How are you doing? I'm super great. Couldn't be better. Thanks for asking. Oh, by the way, thank you so much for this, uh, the latest bottle opener. The salute. My wife found that. That is really awesome. Where did she find it? I'll ask her. She's asleep. Oh, okay. It's I, 10 o'clock here. I am on audio. We're doing this on Skype, and Chris Capel is on video. Um, he has so graciously turned the camera away from his face and on his guitars that are in the background of his room it's in his man cave i'm assuming that's your man cave right yes it's a it's the biggest man cave i've ever seen it's yeah it's it's about 12 by 8 in the background i see a uh a black rickenbacker bass you do i see a jazz bass i don't know if that's a a fender jazz but it is it is a fender jazz i did not know you were a bass player i am I will I will get into that my inspirations and all that. So you're co-hosting the show today, or you are actually hosting the show. I am your douchebag sidekick. So all right. Thank you for uh, thank you for hosting. Did you already donate? I donated a year ago. It was oh. December six last year. Wow, and I owe you. This is a, a make good, huh? <laughs> a make good, yes. I, will, right. I should donate again. All right. Well, you can co-host again too if you donate. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. Stress everybody out. I'll give somebody else a chance. So I'm also see. Yeah, there's so many people waiting in line, Chris Capel. They I, should. I see in the background also a bunch of old beer cans on the wall. And when you you sent, do when you sent me, hold on, I'm looking. In, where's that box you sent? Me? When you sent me this Saluki bottle opener, this the coolest bottle opener I've ever seen. My wife loved it, by the way. It's go, I still haven't hung it on my kitchen wall, but it's going on the kitchen wall. You sent me a a business card. Listeners, if you're if this bores you, I'm sorry, but uh, that's the way it goes. You send me a business card that says "cash paid for old beer cans," and on on your wall behind you, you have a bunch of old beer cans. Do you buy old beer cans? I do. I collect the really old ones from before 1950. What I did, I grabbed that card by accident. It was in my pile there, and I didn't look at the front. I normally send you my regular card. That says the copyright, Chris Capel copywriter. Right. What I did was I made up a bunch of cards and I did a website and sent them out to contractors because that's where old beer cans are found inside 
old buildings. Huh. And some of them are worth thousands of dollars. Really? Not now, any of the ones I have. I went to buysellbeercans.com and it's, a, it's not an active site. Yeah, I probably let it lapse. Oh, okay. I mean, that was a few years ago. Oh, okay. So have oh. you ever sold a beer can for uh, thousands of dollars? No, I've sold. I had a collection when I was younger, and I sold a bunch of them on eBay, you know, pretty much when I left my parents' house, you know, a long time ago, just to get rid of the collection. And, you know, I, I did okay on it, what's but I, the, I kept a few, and I buy some on eBay what's once the in most a while. What's the most money you've received for a beer can? Me, a couple hundred, maybe 300 bucks. And what kind of beer was it? It was actually one called Soul Beer from the 60s. S-O-U-L? Yes. Huh. Oh, soul Malt Liquor. Oh, oh, Soul Malt Liquor. That's not yes. uh, stereotyping, is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good. So I'm going to have to... Uh, you, well, how much can I get for a Tecate beer can? <laughs> you know, you. I was looking tonight, actually, before... I got online, and you know how much a 12-pack of Takati costs here? And I even have the website up. Uh, $6? No, $10.49, and yeah, that's not, the cheap place. Yeah, $9.99 is about right. I get a 30-pack a, a at Safeway for uh, 20 bucks usually on sale. Now, we have really high alcohol taxes here oh connecticut huh oh well, yeah terrible it, i see on your on ebay uh acdc beer beer bottles and beer cans and uh, motorhead beer cans empty going for uh i don't know like 10 bucks and stuff like that for one can oh crazy i mean they they sell that stuff they sell the iron maiden stuff here in town yeah i have a full i have a um acdc german a uh, 16 ounce beer somebody sent me from Germany. I don't know how much that's worth, but I'm not going to drink it. No, keep it. Collector's item. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you for coming on. How can we reach you? <laughs> All right. Welcome to the beer show. Yes. So, well, you, I will take a sip. I, I oh, saved it. What are you drinking? I, this is a Sam Adams. Oh, nice. You're just not going to open it. What, what kind of, you're, now you send me all the, bo the bottle openers. What kind of bottle opener are you opening that bottle of Sam Adams with? I know this is very interesting for the listeners, but you can always skip this episode, friends. This is an actually an old Budweiser opener, just the standard. Oh, okay. It needs to give free. That's called a church key, right? Church key, yes, it is. See, there, I, I know my, I know my bottle openers. <laughs> you do. Can you get money for bottle openers? I think you probably can, right? Yeah, some of these. You know, there's a store up in Pound Ridge, New York. I go up there and buy some of these vintage ones sometimes. And some of the ones I sent you, I bought two of, like the Army Man. Yeah, those are cool. It's like a little like I have that Army here Man. too. Some of the best bottle openers I've gotten were gotten that were sent by you. Oh well, thank you. I'm glad. And ironically, I appreciate those. I rarely drink beer out of the bottle, but I love the bottle openers still. Hey, you're. A, I have a Yeti knockoff. You can't see it at oh, this nice. angle. It's over by the cans. Nice. Very nice. Thank you to we, you. We've started a trend on the Yeti knockoffs. Where'd you get it? <laughs> I started a trend. <laughs> Followed your trend. Yes. All right. So you sent me a bunch of songs. So what would you, what is your ideal um, hosting of the Rock and Roll Geek Show guest host okay. episode? What what is your how how do you envision this episode going? This episode is going to be my journey into rock and roll. Okay. How I got started. What turned me on when I was younger? And how, and old, just how old are you? Go from there. <clears throat> how old are you? <clears throat> oh, I am just over 50, oh. 51. Uh -huh. Still a kid. I first Still met you. You came out here with your family. You, you showed up, or you, were, you sent me an email and said, Hey, I'm in town. I want to take you to dinner. Uh, and you said, Meet me in North Beach. And I showed up, and you had your whole family there. Yeah. We have. We have family out there in the south of the you were with south your, of the Bay Area. Your wife and two daughters, right? Yes, that's where the gray hair comes from. Is it from was the, it was weird for me because I am a very introverted person, and I showed up, and your whole family was there, and it was but it was very nice. Of, your family was very nice, and oh, thank you. And you also came to my house once and had some yes. food, and you also took me to Metallica here once. Yeah, that was that was this year. That was Super Bowl. 
Oh, yeah, the day before the Super Bowl. That's right. And you yeah. came over to my house and watched the Super Bowl the next day. And you were complaining about the food, and you're, you're such a worry wart and not, and it was not bad. I forget you, what I made, but it wasn't that good. You were that. just freaking out about it. it. The only thing that was wrong is one of those, um, what was the thing you and Shockey had? The, <clears throat> the, the spiky fish thing. Oh, sea urchin? The sea urchin. One of them was sour. Uh-huh. One of them was kind of dark and sour, and the other one was fine. Oh, okay. You had some sea urchin over here. Yeah, right? you know. Was Chiaki at my house, too? He was, and his oh. wife, and Don from the dog oh, park. Well, there you go. How is Don? He's he's doing better now. He's home from the from the uh, convalescent hospital. Really? It's usually that's a one-way ticket. Yeah, he got out of there. <clears throat> he knew it was a one-way ticket, and he said, I'm getting the hell out of this place. He They wanted to keep him there, and he said, fuck this place. I am out of here. And so now he's home. He has, I made where he, I demanded that a home care person come over every day and hang out with him and drive him where he needs to go. So oh, good for you. <clears throat> I see him every day. I go by his house every day and check on him. Oh, good for you. All right. So you, so this episode, you want to tell us your journey into rock and roll. By the way, yeah. friends, if you want to donate a hundred dollars, you can tell us everybody your journey into rock and roll too, friends. So <laughs> All right. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. All right. Well, start here. I'm I'm in Wilton, Connecticut. Uh huh. So now it is after ten o'clock, and you got to work tomorrow. I work for myself. Um, yes, I do, but I'm more getting the kids out the door in the morning is far. You know why I got to get up early? But oh, you work from home. Yeah, you know I work from home. I go out once in a while. What's so that? I live in Wilton, and anybody who's a big Kiss fan, uh-huh. which I know you're not, but I'm, a, I'm sure I'm a, a lot Kiss of them got out me, there. Kiss got me into rock and roll. What are you talking about? Really? Do you read all the books on them? Uh, I I read Paul Stanley's book. I read a couple of Gene Simmons books, and that's about. I have the Ace Freely book, but I have not read it. I'll have to. All right. I'm looking for it on audio book, but other than that, I have not. I read the Kiss comics when I was a kid. <laughs> Well, Ace Freely had an underground studio in his house, which is in Wilton, the town I live in. Oh, okay. So that's, you know, anybody who, I mean, I've sold CDs to people on eBay and they're like Wilton, Connecticut. And they're like, oh, can you take a picture of Ace Freely's old house and send it to me kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Do you do and that? And people, people, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of out there. It's, it's like in the north end of town and it's on a private road and it's way set off the woods there but it's still kind of a local attraction that whole oh it is yeah the whole ace freely um house you know people st- you know so he was lived here in the 80s and you know it's he had an underground studio and so forth does the house still have the underground studio in it it does um a woman who i played a benefit concert with last year actually sent me a picture from her rehearsing in there huh so they rent it out to bands yeah, well, the guy who bought the house, I guess, is a musician or something. He's a Kiss fan, obviously, right? I wonder if that raised the value of the house. If you look on, uh, if you look online and type in Ace Freely House Wilton, there's, there's actually you can see the old brochure they made up in the '80s trying to sell it. Huh? But I, it's in the south west corner of connecticut right where that little point is on the map there it's right where that is and i live very close to new york state like really like four minutes from new york state so we're right in the corner of connecticut and i grew up in one town over called new canaan connecticut which is now a big money town but it wasn't so much back then uh, the most famous person from New Canaan of the old school was actually somebody you know about, was Martin Mull. Uh-huh. He grew up in town. Uh, Fernwood Tonight. Yeah, he actually used to live on my street, believe it or not. Huh. Do you but, know him? Did he? Did you guys like him? No, he was, he's old. I mean, he was probably you know, out of high school when I was born. Oh, okay, when you were a kid. I love, yeah, Mar- no. I love Martin Mull. I don't know what he's doing now, but that show was funny. Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 um, him and the other one was Christopher Lloyd. 
the guy who was uh-huh. in Back to the Future. His okay. family had all sorts of money, and they have actually a San Francisco connection or something. One of the old mayors was his uncle or something, and he had this huge estate, and that's actually where I got married, but that's not here nor there. So growing up <laughs> here, okay. we're – we're in the shadow of New York City, so uh-huh. most of our radio stations and TV stations and in culture kind of was that in New York. So you got you picked up all the ra- New York radio stations when you were a kid. Right, they, they, they Correct. traveled that far. Yeah, oh yeah, because you know we're you know no traffic. We could be in New York City in forty minutes. And you're fifty one. So when you were a kid, it was probably around nineteen eighty. Was your musical youth right? Yeah, you know it. When I was a real little kid, I never was interested in any kind of pop music or anything because all the stuff I remember from being a kid was all the really dopey stuff that we all laugh about. Like, I got a brand new pair of roller skates uh, and Delta dark, Dawn right, uh-huh. and Billy Don't Be Here. I Like, that's the kind of stuff that Billy was AM, Don't Be That was AM, AM radio back then. Yeah, that's what I remember, you know, when I was a kid. It was like nothing to grab your attention, you know? So, you know, I never really paid much attention to any kind of rock and roll or any pop music. And, you know, my, I have some old, I'm the youngest of all the kids in my family. And, you know, my oldest sister was into, you know, Neil Diamond and Simon and Garfunkel and stuff. And, you know, so that stuff didn't really interest me. So, um, you know, I never really paid attention. And then... You know, kind of in the late 70s, like in 1977, and I'm sure this was not the case nationwide, but it was the case around New York. There was only one album that anybody ever talked about or cared about, and that was the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. And you liked that album? Oh, I hated it. Okay, good. It it did nothing. (laughs) Everybody loved it, and I couldn't get away from it. So when you were a kid, you weren't around when they had the disco record burning, uh, Death to Disco. That was a little. That was a couple years later. That's when I was when I was into when I was uh, first starting to play. That was when the Death to Disco thing happened, like seventy six. It was a little. Late. I, they had it, but you know, it's really funny. I mean, people are probably going to get mad at this, but the New York radio stations. Everyone talks about these disc jockeys, and they they weren't that great. Yeah. I mean, it's really funny, and the northeast part of the country is really different as far as music like not a lot of stuff came up this way like i'll give you two big examples two bands that never did a thing up here were sammy hagar and ufo sammy Mm -hmm. hagar and ufo were did well in the south yeah nothing up here you know all these bands you were talking about on your show and other people talk about in prism and this and that, and you heard these great things on the radio. They never, this is when I was older, but they never played that stuff up here. UFO never played That's up here. Uh, New York thought they were too cool. They yeah. Were, they, you know, were already, and, they were already into the punk rock and the new wave already. They, yeah, they thought the they were above disco the thing classic rock. Was so big. I mean, they, you know, anywhere you went, you heard this thing. That We had this hippy dippy art teacher used to let us bring albums into school. Everybody brought that one in. You know, we had a school dance. They played Saturday Night Fever. You'd drive home from the dance with their parents. They're playing Saturday Night, you know, the Bee Gees. You know, it was all that kind of stuff. Right. And rock clubs you- were closing and they're making them into discos and everybody was talking about Studio 54. And like, again, this wasn't probably most of America, but, you know, right in the shadow of New York, you know, that's what you know, was big. And the next year it was like the Grease soundtrack and like none of this did it for me. And kids at school were like, what albums do you have? What groups you into? And, and I like never had an answer because it's like, well, this doesn't, you know, nothing really did it for me. And yeah, I'm sure if I looked hard, I'd find stuff, but you know, who knew? So one day I was just around 1978, you know, I'm a little, probably seventh grade or whatever grade I was in that year. I was just flipping around the TV and I saw this clip of the Beatles playing, and I'm like watching. I'm like, hey, Did this you, is kind of cool. Seventy eight is when you discovered the Beatles. Well, you know, I'd kind of heard them, but I didn't. You know, they, you know, it, you know, it was you know, fourteen years ago. It's you know, when you're a little kid, that's like a lifetime ago. You know, just a few years. And I heard this song, and I was like, like the first time I paid attention, and I was like, 
you know, wow, this is kind of cool. You know, this 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 actually means something. You know, it's not like this other garbage I hear. So do you have this playlist ready? Uh huh. All right, let's play the first song. Probably here it is in the Rock and Roll Geek Show, The Beatles. All probably right. for the first and last time. Yeah, now, now I may not make it through this entire song. I'll try and make it through. I'll... Oh, it's like two minutes and 20 seconds. All right. <laughs> All right, here's Chris Capel. All right, I'm going to let you talk it up. All right. This is the Chris Capel uh, guest hosting the Rock and Roll Geek Show. So you're, you're, you're the DJ. So go ahead. You're the New York DJ or the Connecticut DJ. DJ. Go, go ahead. Talk All it right. up. All right. Here we go on the Rock and Roll Geek Show for the first and probably last time. Here's the Beatles with I Want to Hold Your Hand. Nice job. Oh, yeah, I tell you something. I think you'll understand. And I say that something. I want to hold your hand. Yeah, Ringo. So this was the very first Beatles song you heard, huh? Well, I heard others, but this is the first one I looked and it's like, this is really cool. Well, it's the one you, know? you like because it had the catchy, I want to hold your hand. Yeah, you know. And when you're in seventh grade. Yeah. And it's Did it like, make you want to hold a girl's it's something. hand? Did it make you think, well, you have a crush on a girl and you wanted to hold her hand? Oh, yeah. What was the girl's name? You remember? It was what, actually this one girl I used to really like, this really tall thing. Her name was Ellen Kirby. And she left school like after eighth grade and never saw whatever happened to her well i got a little surprise for you chris capel <laughs> <laughs> ellen kirby is listening to the rock and roll G- ellen for ellen kirby you blew it you blew it chris capel is rich now he buys beer cans for big money you had your chance ellen kirby all right i just she just hung up <laughs> All right, there you go. The first, right. you're, that's, you're it, right. It's probably the last time you'll ever hear the Beatles on the Rock and Roll. You know what? <laughs> you can say what you want about the Beatles, but you, I don't you, say anything bad about them. It's, but you got to remember, they are the band that made music part of the culture. It was never like that. You can say what you want, but they, if it wasn't for the Beatles, we wouldn't even be talking about rock and roll in 2016. Did you look up Ellen Kirby on Facebook, by the way, when you no, were... No, I'm not interested in... Because a lot of people look up their old uh, crushes on Facebook. So I think I heard I, that's popular. I would probably be disappointed. I'm, yeah, most... most. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I went to a high school reunion. It was a 20th oh, yeah. reunion. Huh. And I swear to God, I walked in and I thought I was in the wrong party. I'm like, was Ellen who Kirby are all these th- old people was in Ellen here? Was Ellen Kirby there? No, I she she blew out early. She never, she didn't stick around the whole time. But I was just freaked out. I was like, all these people are really old. Oh, hold on, my am wife, I one of these people? This was years yes, ago. Yes, too. you are. My wife just walked in the room. Hello. A little accident, like uh, broke uh, one of those bulbs in the in the basement. So I got to bring the doctor over here. So okay. Okay. Breaking news: the dogs broke something. Ah. Uh, okay. So Ellen Kirby, oh my God, she blew it. And she your, blew it. Does your wife know about Ellen Kirby? N- no, and she <laughs> she knows about a lot, but no. <laughs> okay. So what what happened to Ellen Kirby? She moved away from dad. Yeah, was that was it. I never I never found out. Her dad you know, was she, probably in the service or something. Yeah, never never came back. Does does hearing that song remind? Did bring back memories of Ellen Kirby for you? 
No, absolutely not. Uh, no, okay. It it just reminds me of just you know just being at home on school break and flipping the TV and seeing it. You know, the first and girl, I don't. Did you go ahead? The, so you ne- did you ever go out with Ellen Kirby or did you guys no, ever not, hold no, hands is, or nothing like that? No, 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 no. So. You know, I got kind of interested. I was like, well, this is cool. You know, I, I can I can dig stuff like this. So, you know, I went out and rode my bike to this record store and bought the Red Album. And they're like, hey, we have this other one called the Blue Album. And I said, oh, I can only afford one. And, you know, so I started, you know, buying it. And you go to the library and you're like, hey, there's books on this stuff, you know. So you start getting more into it. And my sister's who were out of the house by this time. They both at one time dabbled in guitar, and one of them actually was pretty good. So we had a couple old guitars sitting around. So I asked my parents, I'm like, hey, can I have guitar lessons? And they're like, yeah, you know, the YMCA gives them after school, so why don't you sign up for that and see if you like it? You know, so I remember I was kind of excited because I was at summer camp, and I was like, oh, boy, school's going to start, you know, in a couple weeks, and I get to go play guitar lessons, and, you know, this is going to be fun. Did you join a band? I did. What? That's later. Oh, but what, as a bass player. What? Why did you play? You, you started taking guitar lessons. Why did you play bass and not guitar? Well, play? I'll get to that. So Okay. Well, basically, me. I, I was friends with a guy who was really into Van Halen. And this is years later. And he's like, everybody plays guitar. And unless you're really good, you're never going to be in a band. So learn to play bass and you'll never, you know, you'll never be out not being in a band and you'll always be able to play. So I said, that sounds good. I wasn't, I wasn't a natural on guitar. I wasn't very good. Cause I started playing guitar, but I wanted to be in a band immediately. I didn't want to have to wait until I got good. I wanted to be in a band immediately. And somebody said, well, if you want to get in a band immediately, play bass because there's only four strings. It's a lot easier. So that's what I did. I moved to bass and got in a band immediately. Oh, good for you. But you're, you're probably more of a natural at it than I am. Well, I stood, when I was a kid, I spent all my time in my bedroom in front of the mirror, jumping around the room like I was in Madison Square Garden. Well, you should. That's the only way to do it. My mom would be wondering what the hell I was doing in there. The whole house would be shaking. Our house was like, in Florida, houses were like raised on like cinder blocks because there was like swamp land underneath. I don't know, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and the whole house would shake because I'm bouncing all around the room to Ted Nugent, uh, Double Life Gonzo. <laughs> well, it's funny when you say that because at that time, like in the late 70s, it's like all the all the burnouts were into, you know, Aerosmith and Ted Nugent. That was me. <laughs> and all the little kids were into Kiss, you know. It's almost like I couldn't find an identity anywhere. Well, Kiss so, was the first album that, but well, Kiss was the first album I actually ever bought. First album I ever had was not Kiss, but that's the first album I ever bought was Kiss Alive. Wow! And they got me into rock and roll, and then I moved on. But I still liked Kiss when I started getting into Aerosmith and AC/DC and all that, and Ted Nugent. I still liked Kiss. I just never kind of broke through. You know, I saw him, but you know, I just never. Never quite got that whole thing, you know. And oh, there's people who just love this stuff. You never got Kiss, you know. I I got it, but it's just you know, it, like I said, it was all the I took karate lessons and so all the you, little, you know, I was twelve and all the nine year olds were into Kiss. So you were into? Did you were you into Aerosmith and Ted Nugent? But no, because the burnouts like those. Guys. Yeah, you know, it was it was like you know you know the older kids' music, you know what? It, yeah, so and what, by 1978, they were kind of you know. At least around here on the way out, you know, nobody. And you, and you were into Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand. While yeah, you know. While and other people were so into took, Aerosmith, you were into Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand. Well, you know, and I took guitar lessons and there'd be other guys in there. You know, it was kind of this class taught by this hippie woman. And, you know, they would teach you, you know, Fleetwood Mac songs, which were kind of big at the time. And, uh-huh. and we'd be talking beforehand and they're like, hey, what do you like? And I'd be like, I like this. They say, oh, if you like the Beatles, you like the Rolling Stones. So. And the Rolling Stones actually just put out a blues album the yeah, other day. Yeah, I, I downloaded it. I have not listened to it yet. I heard it's good. It's good, yeah. It's blues covers, right? Yeah, all covers. So, you know, and they like if you like the Rolling Stones, you know, you like the Who. And if, you know, so I guess we'll cue up the second song oh, here. The yeah. second one is a Rolling Stones song. It's actually from their previous album before this one. It's called Let Me Down Slow. 
I'm trying to throw in some more obscure stuff. This is from A Bigger Bang from 2005. That's their last studio album, was A Bigger Bang? Yeah, until a couple days ago or last week or the week before. Okay, we're playing. Are we playing? Uh, Let me down go, slow now. Go for looks it. Looks like you're in. You looks like you're finishing up that that uh, Sam Adams. What? Yeah, what what Sam Adams is that? Is that a this winter is, ale? This is the regular Boston Lager. Oh, it is. Okay, is that your they favorite beer? I'm sorry. Is that your favorite beer? No, it's just one I just happened is, to buy. Is the wife in asleep now? Yeah, she's asleep. She's going to work. She has to work at eight tomorrow. Oh, what does she do for a living? She's an ER tech. Oh, nice. Yeah, you know, she I can found, deal with stuff that so I can't. She knows deal what with. a code. You know what a code three is? I'm sure it's pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds serious. I learned what a code three was when I was in the emergency room. I cut my hand on the painting, and uh, I was in the emergency room waiting. And they said, "We got a code three. Got a code three. So I googled what's a code three. I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but. And that's what the. It means when the, an ambulance is called. No, oh, well, she also used to be a volunteer EMT. She used to ride the ambulance. She oh, used right. to drive the ambulance. Oh, like like uh, David Lee Roth. Yeah, you know, she she was doing that in town. You know, she now with her new schedule, it's not really that easy. But so she's taking a sabbatical. But yeah, she's in the medical profession. Oh, nice. And you're in the copyright profession. Yeah, I yeah. I I will get into that later. I'll tell everybody where they can buy my books on Amazon. Now I notice your base. I'm I'm sorry to digress. I notice your base. Well, I'll I'll talk about that after the Rolling Stones. So talk up the Rolling Stones song. All right, from their 2005 album. This is "Let Me Down Slow" by the Rolling Stones. I I, I screwed it up. I'm so I apologize. Oh, I'm a terrible yeah. sidekick. You look a little dressed up You're acting way too smart You face a little bit flushed For a walk in the park And you're clutching your phone As you walk in the door And your smile's got a twist You're looking so hardcore If you're something to see don't be too direct Cause I feel a little fragile Don't hit the nail on the head oh, I said, oh, baby, baby Let me down real slow There's a swish in your step There's a gleam in your eye Are you coloring your eyes With some new kind of dye But the first one to blink Is the first one to fall
All right, there you go. That's a pretty good tune. Actually, I the first don't that pro album. I don't have that album. That uh, album is yeah. You do. I gave it to you. Oh, you did. You sent me the whole album. That must have got lost when the when the um my in one of the iTunes crashes. What are the iTunes crashes? I had several iTunes crashes and lost all my music. Oh, that that's gotta hurt. Yeah, that's a good tune. I think Rough Justice was the song that I heard that was a rocking tune. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably an underrated album. I feel. I oh, imagine. absolutely! It's it's like their best thing since Tattoo You. That was actually an early concert. Was one of the first big concerts I went to was the Tattoo You tour in Hartford. Uh, many when, many years ago, when I was in eleventh grade, uh, some girls came out, and that album was really really good. Yeah, that, do you? I think and. This is probably unpopular. I think it's a little overrated and not. Some girls, I disagree with you. That's I, I did the very first classic albums revisited. I believe I ever did on the Rockwood Geek Show with some girls. All right, let me let me take that back. It's not overrated. There's other albums that are equally as good that are not mentioned as much. Well, like what Exile on Main Street or something like that. Oh yeah, and Sticky Fingers. Those and aren't Beggar's mentioned. Banquet. Those aren't mentioned as much as some girls. For some reason, people love that one more than I some of the other ones. I would imagine people like some like Exile on Main Street and and uh, albums and Sticky Fingers. I would imagine those those are uh, way way more revered than some girls. But some girls was a huge credit was a huge uh, record, I guess. But when I was a kid, that's what I I that's that's the first record that really got me into the Rolling Stones. I never really got into the Rolling Stones that much, but that that album. I really liked. I have the vinyl, the vi- vinyl record. They recalled this. Is a, this is not any any uh, big uh, revelation or anything or a big scoop, but uh, they recalled the original uh, pressing of that album. You know that, right? Yeah, it had some either Raquel Welch. Yeah, or it had Lucille some, cele- or some celebrities complained or something, and so they had to take off the. They had to re- reissue it without the celebrities' pictures or something like that. And the, the guys, Beatles had one recalled. They're, they had one with them covered with the called the Butcher cover. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I have that original Rolling Stones cover, and uh, it's uh, all the guys in the band are in drag, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Another early one will go right into oh, music. Not um, impressed with my you, rock knowledge, huh? <laughs> you, I imp- that's why we listen to you. <laughs> you never asked how we discovered you. What? I was just. Oh, going how, through podcasts. Oh, on how iTunes you discovered the I, Rock and Roll Geek Show? Go ahead. How did you discover the no, Rock and Roll Geek I Show? I was going through podcasts. You know, I discovered podcasts and I said, I'll try these. And some were good and most of them were really lousy. Were they on iTunes or how? Yeah, what? you know, I mean, this wasn't at the what did beginning. You, type beginning. In, you just type in Rock and Roll? Yeah, you know, just was just, you know, we'll just look or just kind of browsing through. I mean, this uh-huh. is, God, it's got to be. Six or seven years ago, or uh-huh. maybe eight. I mean, it was was I wasn't there at the beginning, but I was there at probably in the two hundreds. Okay, so you stumbled across, and and you and one showed up that said "Rock and Roll Geek Show." And yeah, you know, so I you saw, you know, oh, that's I was a driving rich. more in those days. So I you thought, oh, that's an interesting title. I'll check out. I'll check out. Probably. One. Well, it's a good thing the first one you listened to wasn't uh, me sitting in a tree stand. No. <laughs> No, I remember I sent you an email about a crocus thing you thought was good. I was like, oh, my God, that is the worst thing I've ever heard in my life, or a meatloaf thing you thought was so good. And huh. and you called it hate mail, and I was, no, oh, no, not me, hate oh, mail. Oh, you sent me a hate mail. Nice. Yeah, you know, that, that oh, that's how this whole mess oh, got started. Shit, I'm going to look for that hate mail now, because I, oh, I, I don't believe I deleted the, any hate mail. Was it uh, Chris at Is that the? Yeah, it might have even been... An opt online, and who knows? It was probably I listened probably for two or three years before I even uh, let's see, the wrote first, you an email. The first one I have um, from you <laughs> is from 2010, uh, talking oh, about the knack. Well, that's coming up. The knack is actually coming up on this episode. They were they were huge. Oh no way! This is the first e- the first email I got from you. Long time listener, first kind ki- first time emailer. Love the Knack episode because I had Burton Avir on and we did a classic album yes. revisited on the Knack on Get the Knack. There's no hate mail. The Crocus oh, song. Did, okay, no. What you mail. what you sent me was okay. Music from the last episode. 
the meatloaf song. That was absolutely the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yes, that was it. I wonder what meatloaf song I played. Oh, it was it was terrible. Dead Ringer for Love or something like that. It was it was one of the new ones, whatever huh. came out that year. Well, Hang Cool Teddy Bear was that 2010? No, I don't think so. No, Hang Cool Teddy Bear. No, huh? And then he said, the Crocus song. That was absolutely the second worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> a, bl- a blatant ripoff of Rock and Roll Damnation from ACDC's Powerage album. Okay. Crocus side note. Mark Storis d- declined an audition for ACDC in, eight, in 1980 following the death of Bon Scott. Yeah, he thought Crocus Tommy was going to be bigger. Tommy offed himself. You know, I know about Tommy Kiefer offing himself, and he uh, did the coolest guitar solo I ever saw when he swung it around by the guitar cord. It was a badass guitar solo. I saw him open for uh, Nazareth on that tour. It was the hardware tour, I believe. See, LA Nazareth, that's another band that never made it up in the Northeast. <sighs> yeah, they were you know? popular in the South. Yeah, and even bands like... Journey and Ario Speedwagon were nothing until they started having hit singles. So, I mean, so you hated he, the so you hated the Crocus tune, you hated the Meatloaf tune. Yeah, you know, and I played LA. And I'm Guns. not a hater. I'm I'm a I'm an easygoing, good natured guy. Well, I don't mind having a criticism. And that's by the way, that's what makes uh, the uh, rock and roll geek friends uh, such a great friends community because not everybody likes all the same stuff. I would imagine a lot of stuff I don't like people like. You said L.A. Guns. Kudos for not having any L.A. Guns in your library. They do, however, have one great song from the first album, Electric Gypsy. Electric Gypsy. Yeah, and my, fr- I play in, I, my friend is, was in L.A. Guns. My, uh, Mick Cripps, one of my good friends now. He wrote that song, I believe. Is he the guy that made all the money and doesn't have to play anymore? He doesn't play music. He doesn't. I don't know if he made it, made all the money, but he doesn't play. Well, he plays. He plays with me in in the Plunkets, but he doesn't play in L.A. Guns. No, no. They're they're, they're in the news this week, actually. Uh, yeah, because uh, Phil Lewis said he's quitting L.A. Guns, even though he's doing L.A. Guns with. Um, <laughs> Tracy guns. With Tracy guns. I'm quitting LA guns. No, I'm getting rid of this backup band I have called LA Guns, and I'm doing a different version of LA Guns with with Tracy Guns. So that was a bogus uh, retirement um, press release. I have a great Tracy Guns. It was a Gun nice stuff. way of it was a nice way of firing his band. Yeah, He's... Tracy Guns on a really bad version of L.A. Guns, was opening for Accept. Uh-huh. And I remember he was watched, and Accept came on first, and there was like 20 people in the club. And this is back 20 years ago. And he was watching Wolf Hoffman. Uh-huh. And his his face looked so scared, like, oh, crap, I got to follow this guy. Yeah, Wolf Because everybody was just going tone. nutty for Wolf Hoffman, and he's like, I can't do this. So, well, so Accept opened for L.A. Guns. right. And what year was I? Be, I wonder was L.A. Guns big at that time? No, it was 1996. Oh, so they were already. Oh yeah, the deal, huh? The yeah. last tour with they Udo. probably they probably booed L.A. Guns. Well, I don't know if L.A. Guns headline. Most people were probably there to see L.A. Guns. Wolf Hoffman had a great guitar tone. Oh, Wolf Hoffman was the smoking. Finally, what is I'm reading? Continuing your email from 2010. Uh, I was one of 33 people in the he- L.A. Guns co-headline. Oh, okay, you told me that. Oh, you just said oh, okay. It again. Told you Ended again. up walking out during L.A. Guns' second song. They suck so bad. Finally, what's <laughs> up with Bunny Carlos? A cryptic message on CheapTrick.com simply stated, Bunny Carlos is currently not the touring drummer for Cheap Trick. Bunny remi- remains a band member. Everyone is healthy, and Cheap Trick will continue the tour as planned. Well, we all know what happened since then. By we the, do. By the way, if you want to piss off Queensryche fans, remind them that Jeff Tate auditioned for Journey in 1998 when the band was looking to replace Steve Perry. Obscure but true. There you go. Steve, uh, Chris Capel, a, a true rock and roll geek. Oh, right. <laughs> With the knowledge. There's, there's Chris Capel's very first email. I wonder if I read that on the show, did I? I, I don't know. I, well, I don't just know. now did. I don't, I'm bleeding. I don't know why the hell I'm bleeding, but I'm bleeding. Fuck it. I think I got uh, fish hooks in my hand or something. Uh. <laughs> All right. Back to you, Chris Capel. All right. Let's <laughs> go with the third track. Let's go with the Kinks track. By the way, it's going to be a long episode if we play all 15 of these two. No, we're not going to play. We can, we, we can. I put some filler in there. Oh, we don't have did. to play the Bruce Dickinson song. Oh, I like that one. 
I love that. <laughs> well, song. we can play part that of. Is... We can play part of the songs. All right. Well, let's let's play the, the let's play the King song because that that's a good one. By the way, I want to mention I shouldn't do this on the rock on on your show, but uh, the record label just sent me uh, the new Dan Baird record. Uh, he's got a solo record and. Wow, is it good? All right, I'm shutting up. Well, good to know. <laughs> we'll talk about Dan Baird later. He's what I've heard. He's what Dan. I've heard. Of, uh, well, I haven't heard the entire album, but what I've heard, I really, really like. All right, well, back to you, Chris Capel. All right, one of the an early concert I saw, and if you read the Ray Davies book, which I reviewed on your show at one point a couple years ago, uh-huh. he talks about their Madison Square Garden debut in 1981, which was an early concert for me. And it was give the people what they want to. I never saw so, the Kinks live. They see the Kinks never came down to the South. I don't believe. Yeah, but yet up here they were a big deal. Yeah, see that's the difference between the South and the North. Yeah. But I did like the Kinks, and I, as a matter of fact, I believe uh, give the people what they want was all over the radio. But they never came. I don't believe they ever came to Jacksonville, Florida. Crazy stuff. They played the Garden and. Actually, Red Rider of Lunatic Fringe oh, yeah. fame opened up for him, believe it or not. Uh-huh. Is that so, it? Is that everything? Is that it? <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, that's, here's the song. I was oh, kind of waiting oh, for the song I, to I'm, start. I'm looking for the kink song, and I don't... Where the fuck is it on this playlist? It's his third song. Oh, oh, <sighs> Wake up, you son of a bitch! We're half an hour in, we've played six minutes worth of music. <laughs> I'm sitting there looking the for it. I'm sitting there looking for it. It's, the thir- it's right there. <laughs> That's Chris Capel's pick, and I like that tune actually. I like oh, the Ki- awesome. I like Ray Davies a lot, and I like the Kinks, even though I never saw them play live. Oh, they used to play. They played. I saw them probably six times. Huh. I'd like to have Ray Davies on the show, but I would. I think I would be afraid to have him on because I think he would probably think I was a dumbass and he would be mean to me. 
he's got a reputation. Oh, does he of being a mean guy? Oh yeah. I thought his brother was the one who was mean. Maybe they're both mean. Probably. I heard those guys used to get in fist fights on stage. Or oh yeah, day. it's terrible. Like Oasis, except twenty years before. Now, do you, years before. I'm looking at your base on in your room. Yes. You just opened the door. Did you I just did. Open it's getting hot in here. Oh, is it? It's getting hot because of rock and roll. It's getting hot in here, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So uh, your base is right next to the door. Did you put that there for this, or does it always it always sit right there? No, the cleaning lady moved it there. Because if you see, there's a box amp. I don't know if you can see I it. I can see that it's plugged into something. Yeah, there's a box amp there down at the bottom. Because I was going to say, I, I was going to ask you if that thing gets knocked over all the time when you walk through the door, because it's right next to the door. No, because, you know, I, I don't even really use that door that much. I use the one over. Where does that door lead? This leads to a hallway, and if you take a right, you go into, like, the TV room, the family room, oh, the playroom. Yeah. If you take a left, you go into the kitchen. So how many bedrooms is your house? We're four. Oh, look at you. Four-bedroom oh. house in Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah, we're there living large. You, I can tell. Yeah. You got um, a bar in that room, in that man cave, too? I'm sorry? You have a bar in that man cave? Well, I do where the beer cans are. There's a if you see underneath there, there's the fridge. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I can't Under, really to see the that. left of the fender base, I can nice. kind of oh. jack you over there. Oh, yeah. The I white just, okay. right yeah. over there. Oh, there's yeah. a fridge in there. There's a bar there. Yeah, it's a small room, but yeah. Yeah, it's a small room. You know, I got my Metallica figures up there. So I got you my let your, Lemmy. your cleaning lady comes in and cleans your uh, your quote office. Yes. Yeah, I don't let the cleaning lady in my room. It's obvious if you see my room. I've seen your room. It's a disaster, man. It's worse now. All right. All right. Back back to the rock back. and roll. Um, <laughs> I've got to go with the you know What's the big four. What's that poster behind you? What's that 2007 poster? Oh, that's the U.S. Open poster. It's actually, I had a TV mounted there, and there's a whole big gaping hole in the wall. So I had to find a poster to put there. I have a bunch of stuff like a Blondie poster and all the stuff in the basement. I, I used to I used to rotate them, and I have a Rolling Stones poster here, and an Oasis poster here, and a James Bond poster, and and I have my autographed Cheap Trick picture and some autographed albums over on the okay. to the left oh, there. Gosh. You can't see those. <laughs> you probably can't hear me either. Um. All right, back to the Big Four. Let's go with the Who song because. Those are the four most important groups in rock. For you or for anybody? Anybody. If there weren't the Who, the Beatles, the Stones, and the Kinks, like, again, we wouldn't be sitting here in 2016 talking about rock and roll. All right. Well, there you go. Chris Capel, the rock and roll copywriter, has, has uh, proclaimed it. Yeah, this is an early Who song, and everybody loves it. Yeah. You don't hear it that much like you used to. It's the kids are all right. All right. We'll probably make it through. Uh, we'll try to make it through the whole song. It's... Yeah. I like the two. I love the Who. So. Mind, Not my favorite era of the Who. My favorite is uh, Who's Next. Although that record has been way overplayed, it's probably in the top five records ever made. Oh, absolutely. I know, I your wife in the room? She come in. Your wife in? No, no, she's asleep. Oh, okay.
There you go. God, there's like a certain kind of youthful charm to that song. Well, yeah, I can tell. I, I saw you um, playing along to it. You were in. I was. I was good. That's I why, forgot the camera was on. That's me. why rock and roll's so good. It makes people uh, do crazy things. Not crazy. It makes people uh, lose themselves in the music. I lost myself in the yeah, music. That's okay. <laughs> so here we are. I'm 14 years old, and I like this stuff, and I'm so out of touch. I like had a great record collection for 1966, and you know. So so you're 14, and it's 1979, 79, and you're up to 1966 in your record collection. Yeah, and you can just. If you're paying attention and you know your stuff, you just know what happens next. You don't know what happens next. Uh, what happens next is if I'm all going, these... If I'm going, mm-hmm. go ahead. If I'm going by your playlist, I, I know what happens next, but go ahead. You can tell by the playlist. What happens next is all the bands that were listening to this stuff when they were kids okay. Got you. all came out. All the cheap tricks and the cars and the knack and Blondie and Squeeze. And suddenly it was like, this is awesome. My time has come. The music I love is now the current hot stuff. Uh It was like, you know, the absolute, you know, the Knack is the first new band that I like discovered that came out. And it's like, I love this band. This is my band. You know, Cheap Trick. My sister brought one home from college. She so brought I, uh, a cheap trick record home from college. Yes, yeah, she went to college up in Boston, so um, they were a little hipper up there than in New York. And she also brought home Jay Giles. But oh, nice. Um, but it was a, it was really cool because suddenly, the music I liked was popular. Suddenly, these new groups were coming out. I'm like, I was the cool guy. I was the one who brought the cool albums to school. You know and. You know, all the, like I said. Now, did night- that impress any girls? Because all the, because what you liked was popular. Now, did you say, hey, I now I know the cool. Did you show that to girls? And, and I don't know if their girls were that impressed by, you know, my Sharona. But <clears throat> it didn't matter because it was cool to me, you know. And that was, that was good enough, you know. And I finally felt like, hey, I like the music that's on the radio. I like the cool stuff. You know, we had these like junior high dances before and it would be, all be, you know, the Bee Gees and, you know, this stuff. And then oh. that year they had one and it was all that stuff. And they and, played My Sharona. And- yeah. And, you know, you know, silly stuff like Rock Lobster and, you uh-huh. know, Devo. So some that of that, you know, and, 19- you know, kind of some that was probably cruel 19- to be kind, you know, 19- all that kind of Nick Lowe, you know, all that stuff that came out then. It was really a really good time for music. Right, yeah. That was and like I 1981. Love I'm sorry, say that again. That I, was probably around 1981. Yeah, 1979, 80, 80. It, would last, it didn't last that long, you know, the, the whole, that whole new wave of, you know, those bands. You know, some of them stuck it out like the Cars. And I think the Cars have like the best batting average. I mean, they... Did not do a lot of bad songs or albums. And, you know, that was my thing, you know. So let's let's go for the Blondie song because that's quick and that's that's punchy and she's gorgeous. And okay. I met her at a book signing and it was the only time I couldn't talk. What was her book? Did she do she a biography? Did a, um, she did. They did a book when they got back together in the 90s and it was... Um, they had a book signing in New York, and I was like, well, I'm not doing anything. So I went down there, and I had to wait in line for about two hours, and I got to her, and I was like, uh, uh, I couldn't say a word. She, like, oozed stardom. It was, oh, she was, ah. Really? Oh. It was the only time I couldn't think of something to say. You just stood there and, and just showed And up. just, like, drooled on myself. Did you take a picture with her or anything? Oh, I didn't. It was so awful. I looked so bad. Did you say, Hi. Looked, did you say I'm such a big fan? Or did you say I couldn't even get that out? You, you know, said, it was just like, I was just like, thank you for being here. Something really thank stupid. Thank you for being here. Oh, God, why did I say that? Yeah. You stood you know, in line I, the whole time thinking of something to cool to say. I'm going to say something that's going to impress her. What can I say that's going to make her 
think this guy is the coolest person in line. You sit there in the two hours in line thinking of something to say. Oh, here comes the cat. Hey, kitty. That's Caesar the Munchkin cat. So you, you're in line two hours waiting to think something cool to say, and you finally got there and you clammed up. Oh, it was terrible. So did you have anything rehearsed that you were thought about saying? I don't even remember, but oh my God, it was... But, you know, she just the does picture, that. I'm like, looked like such a dork. And she was just sitting there so cool, you know. And Chris Stein, the guitar player, was there, too. Everybody does that when they go to meet one of their heroes. They, they, want, it, they want to say something to their hero that's going to stand them out and make them say, this guy is the coolest fan of all these people in line. This guy's the coolest. And everybody does that when they're waiting in line to meet their heroes. And uh, it usually never works out that way. Because no one ever comes up with anything. I mean... Somebody friend was talking about meeting something, meeting the guys in Black Sabbath or something. And I said, nobody's come to Tony Iommi and said, you're the reason I played guitar. I said, come on. I said, Joe Perry has not had a day in his life where some kid has not come up to him and said, you're the greatest guitar player I ever saw. You know, it's it. Yeah, uh, it's usually so, not the coolest thing you want to say. No, no, but. So the, you the, said nothing, and she just said, "Sign your book," and said, "Get the hell out of here." And you yeah. know, also was I was probably the last fifteen people in line, so they had already been through a couple hours of oh, okay of book signing. So well, they were they signed, they were nice enough. All right, well, good. So let's play the Blondie song. All it's right. short. It's got three minutes, twenty seconds. It's eleven fifty nine. Now, if you could get back, lines. if you could go back in line, what would you say to her this time? <laughs> Tell her how I used to hold her poster up with one hand. I used to hold your poster up with one hand. I oh, don't know what I would say. This guy's the coolest. All right, <laughs> here's Blondie. <laughs> oh shit, I'm fucking up here. Hold on a second. No, let let, let me open up. another yeah, beer. Go ahead. Let me take take a sip and do the ah, and then I'll play it. Ah, <sighs> I can't do it like you. No point. <laughs>
All right, there you go. He is such a killer drummer, Clem Burke. Yeah, he's one of the best drummers that there are. Oh, absolutely. All these bands like Cheap Trick and The Knack and they all in Blondie, they all had these just Yeah, great drummers. That was the, the drummers. Common, and I, uh, that's what I listened to. That was the common thread in all the bands that you played so far. It was a great yeah, drummer. Yeah, it's, it's very funny. I I I'm as a bass player, I always the first thing I listen to is the drummer. I almost never listen to the bass player. Um, well, let's go on. I got a really short Knack song, which is a minute and a half of 92 seconds of power pop. I actually, they were the first band, like I said, the first new band I got into, hooked up with right away. And they weren't around that long. And I did actually get to see them. It was the first club show I ever went to in New York City. And um, I remember a guy came up to me in the bathroom and he said, cocaine. And I didn't know if he was offering it or was asking if I had it. And I was like, uh, no. Um, and But they broke up right after that. They, then that was it. They never, they never fulfilled their promise. I thought they were going to be like the kinks and be around for like years. But no, didn't work out. All right. You want to introduce the tune? All right. This is from their second album, their sophomore slump album. Um, which sounded like the leftovers from the first album. It's called Hold On Tight and Don't Let Go here on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Michael Butler. Nice. Who's this engineer? The guy running the the board on this show is like, does not have his shit together. You got to fire that sidekick of yours, Chris. Make me feel right. You got to rock me. Give me shivers tonight. You got to hold on tight and don't let go. Me when you turn out the light, you gotta hold on tight, no let go. Don't leave, don't make me lonely. Don't say goodbye. If you don't love me only, I love to die. Make me feel right, you gotta rock me, give me shivers tonight, you gotta hold on tight, no let go. There you go. Nice, short, and sweet. I love that. I think that second album's good. Believe oh, I not. do too. It just <clears throat> that first it, album is way, way, way better than My Sharona. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was one of the best uh, uh, track by tracks that I I thought that I ever had was when Bert Navier was on. I loved it when you guys deconstructed the guitar solo. Yeah. Yeah, I like listened to that one like ten times. That was just like so cool to me. Yeah, it was cool to me too. Bert Navier was a great guitar player. Yeah, you know, I saw him. You know, he handed me his guitar pick, and he didn't even have a custom. He had a Fender Medium. There you go. The tortoise shell pick. There you go. All right, the first concert I ever went to was Queen at oh, Madison Square Garden. See, Queen never came to get to count to us, uh, Florida. They never; these bands never came down to the South. Well, I could see that because it's kind of funny that you know, got to remember, and people forget about this. If they ever played in the seventies, we will rock you, and we and we are the champions at a football stadium. The place would riot. They people didn't like that. You were either a Queen fan or you thought they were the worst thing ever. Well, uh, News of the World was a huge album. I don't know. For me, it, it was, was when I was. It a was kid, huge here too. It was all over the radio when I was a kid. That was one of my favorite albums. I was in, I think I was in twelfth grade or eleventh or twelfth grade when News of the World came out, and 
that album was that stayed on my turntable for a long time. I think I bought it like the week it came out, and so they were at least the the quote cool people liked them. So yeah, I, the rock fans liked them, but general public thought they were just that just album too was huge. Over the that top. News of the World album was huge, but that's not what you. That's not what's in the playlist here. No, I just, you don't have to play this. I just put an alternate version to keep yourself alive. I was trying to play stuff from the big bands, but not the stuff you normally hear. Well, uh, well Feather Witch, the, one, of my, one of my cover bands that I'm in, plays Keep Yourself Alive. And it's my favorite song that we played. It's my favorite song to play live in that band. Well, then put this one on. This is a, this is we'll play a half of, We'll play half of this song. Take. It's a it's an alternate test. So is this from the uh, remastered night of the yeah, opera? Yeah, it's from the remastered. Why not do something a little off center here? Yeah. We'll play a little bit of "Keep Yourself Alive." I love this tune, and it's uh, really fun for me to play on the bass. Keep yourself alive. Keep yourself alive. <laughs> By the way, the mix, the regular mix, way better. Yeah, this one isn't as good. In my way, might you grow a little wiser, a little better every day? But if I cross a million rivers and I rode a million miles, then I'd still be where I started bread and butter for a smile. Well, I sold a million mirrors in a shopping alleyway, but I never saw my face in any window any day. Now they say your folks are telling you to be a superstar. Not as good as a regular mix. No, I like it though. I, I love that tune. That's probably one of my favorite Queen tunes, other than everything on um, News of the World. Right. So you know, after after all this stuff, I kind of got more into heavy metal. I got more into the you know Scorpions and uh -huh. what Scorpions you know, was what what was the album that turned you on to the Scorpions that got you into Scorpions. Blackout, uh, animal magnetism. Oh, where nice. they used to play at night. They used to they used to do this thing. I think it was called, I forget what it's called, day splitting or something, where they would play certain things only at night. And if you listen to the rock stations at night, yeah, you'd they would hear, play the harder stuff at night. Yeah, or you you know what they used to do? They used to always play the Canadian bands. They used to play you know Red Rider and Saga and. Uh -huh. And Chilliwack at night. They never play it during the day. And Kim Mitchell. Remember Kim Mitchell? Yeah, but never never heard that out here again. Huh. The Kim Mitchell was, uh, they, there was a song that played from Kim Mitchell in Jacksonville, Florida. I don't remember the name of the tune, but it was a popular song they played at night. 
Uh, I I don't know where I was going with this. What were you talking about? I lost my train of thought. Go oh, ahead. Well, <laughs> I was saying I was into metal, and you oh, know, yeah, by then right. I'm in college, oh, yeah. the first and it went up to... The, the Scorpions album that first got me turned on to Scorpions was Tokyo Tapes. And really? And then after Tokyo Tapes was... Um, um, the great album with the with the best album cover of all time was Love uh, Drive. Love Drive, yeah. great album. And Animal Magnetism is an even better album than Love Drive, though. Then I kind of then after the after that, um, I liked them less because they the, got pop. Yeah, after Blackout was wasn't as good as Animal Magnetism. Animal Magnetism was just a great album. Songs were fantastic. Now, which cat is that? Same cat. That's Caesar. Yeah, it's a little one, the I one mean, with the extra toes. And what was the cat? Is that the same cat that walked in before? Yeah, yeah. The other one's probably upstairs someplace in one of the kids' beds. Um, and then I went off to college, University of Connecticut, and and it's interesting because that's in Stores, Connecticut, and C- Connecticut's pretty lame with rock stars because we have like Michael Bolton and uh-huh. the Carpenters and. You know, we nobody really John Mayer, nobody really cool. Pe- came I would imagine from. people retire in Connecticut. They retire to Connecticut. No, because the taxes are too high. Oh, really? Uh, they Bob, live, Bob, they live it, here to invest in the real estate and send their kids to school. And they, does, you know, the kids get out of school and they move somewhere cheaper. Doesn't Baba Bowie live in Connecticut? He lives in Greenwich. Is he that, lives in. That's the first town out of New York. And that's that's a huge money town. Actually, oh, my wife's from there. Oh, in your back. Oh, nice. um, but up at the University of Connecticut, it's interesting because that town, two rock stars came from. It was Peter Tork and the Monkees lived there. Uh-huh. And um, Rivers Cuomo from Weezer lived oh, really? there. Nice. He lived in this commune with his hippie parents. Oh, and, oh okay. And that's the same town that actually um, your buddy, Wendy O. Williams, killed herself up there. Yeah, she moved to Connecticut. Connecticut, up in the what? woods. And I know, I know exactly, I go mountain biking. I know exactly where they lived. I know it's way now, out in the woods there. Is that a monument where she killed herself? Do they, is there like a monument or a plaque? I didn't see anything. And the husband, I think, is still there, you know, so. Swinson. I mean, Ron Swinson, is that his name? Yeah, there was actually a record store that's not there anymore called um, Phoenix Records in Waterbury, which was like halfway between here and there. Uh-huh. And they had this autograph poster of the plasmatics there. And I'm like, hey, how'd you get that? And he's like, oh, they live upstate in stores and they don't even have all their records. And every time I get something in, I call them up and they come down and pick it up. Huh. So, yeah, they they lived up there for years. And and another guy actually who was there actually went to school with me but dropped out was Moby, if you remember him. Oh, yeah. oh. Well, I love Wendy O. Williams. Yeah. That was kind of a big deal. I was too young to, you know, go to any of that stuff because most of that stuff was, you know, in in eighteen in when those days the drinking age was eighteen, but I was still below that. And you had to go like into New York City and in those days, it was like really scary to go to New York. Uh-huh. Yeah, I never saw the Plasmatics live, but uh, I saw them on TV and stuff. But I never got to see them live. They, I loved Wendy o. Williams a lot. Yeah, that that's a shame. You know, she was into the um, whole wildlife restoration thing, and yep. she was worked a, in an animal hospital. They would have been a uh, good reunion if the time would have been right for them to reunite. They would have been headlining all those festivals. Yeah. But enough of that. Back. This is your show, Chris. Cabell. All right. God, we're like, we're like practically then We're like an we're hour, hour and 20 and minutes into this. Don't 20 worry minutes. about all right. it. All right. So okay. let, let's wrap this up. Um, let's play a couple of the newer songs. We're here, uh, we're here as long as you want, Chris Capel. As long as I want. Um, all right. Well, let's. My wife used to work in a law firm back before she was in the medical field. In huh. kind of interesting, and this stuff's in books, so I'm not like revealing anything. But one of the clients was Peter Chris and his divorce. By cases. the way, I remember your wife. I don't. She was a very attractive woman, if I remember right. And she is very attractive, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. How did woman. you get her? You must have a lot of money. You must have come from money, right? Actually, no, but um, <laughs> I'm insulting think, you, right? I'm giving you a backhanded whatever. No, <laughs> you know, it was just it was all about timing. And if you want to know, 
she was working in a law office and she was there on a Sunday doing her resume because this was back in the days before people had dial up. This is when you were on AOL. And she was working there on a Sunday because she was the computer at work had a dial up AOL thing and she uh-huh. didn't have that at home. And I was out. I knew her employer and he had gotten a hip replacement and he asked me to go to his office. That she, he couldn't figure out why he couldn't dial into his office. So I went over to his office on a Sunday and I had a bag of tacos and an iced tea and I walk in and she's there working. And so I'm like, you brought, hey, how you doing? You brought the tacos because you were going to eat lunch while you were uh, working on his stuff? Yeah, because it was a Sunday. I didn't think anybody was in oh, his okay. office. Oh, okay. And she was there and I had never met her before. And I was, and so I asked her out and she. Wait a minute. So I, you walked in there the very first time you saw her. I said, hey, you want to go out? Well, no, actually, I just. She was working and I didn't bother her. So when I came back, I came back the next week. Did you offer her one of your tacos? I did not. She she was like I was like out riding my bike that day. I was not like dressed very well. Uh, I was, you know, was in but shorts. You, but and you were quite impressed with this hot. You were quite impressed with this hot chick who happened to be in the law office. Yeah, you know, I was. Hot. And, wow. What's her deal? Did you go to her boss? Did you go to the guy who you're working for? And, hey, what's with, what's with uh, what's her deal? Did no, she- because he. It was funny because she was actually leaving. Oh, she said, and, "Oh, hi, I'm just leaving." No, she was leaving the company. And the, oh. the day I asked her out, she had gotten her new job, and I asked her out. So it was like a really good and day. Said, for and her. she said yes. She said yes. And so you said hi. Would you want to? Would you like to go on? Hi, my name's Chris. Well, I, I chatted her up a bit, and oh, um, hey, hey, how, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, you know, I was. What's you know, the was, line that you? Here comes a caddy. What's the line that you? Uh, well, because she had with? a picture of her nephew on her desk, oh, and I was like, "Is that oh, your is boyfriend? That, is that is that your kid?" Because I was like, "Oh no, maybe she's you know divorced uh-huh. or something." Right. Uh-huh. Not that there's anything wrong with it. So she could have taken that as an insult, saying that she was old. Right, and I was the thing I was worried about. It was like because he's a few years younger than me that. That she, I was too old for. I thought, you know, oh my God, you know. So, but it, so you said, out. is that your kid? And she said, no, that's my nephew. Yeah, I said, oh, all right. I said, do you want to go out sometime? And right then, do you want to go out yeah. sometime? Yeah, I don't know and if she it was said, right after that. And she said, sure. She said yes, and she was wow. very excited and very enthusiastic. Wow. And look at you, uh, man! I would never have the nerve to just walk up to somebody and say, you want to go out with sometime. I well, never have. I, I never be- have the balls to do that. Well, I normally wasn't good in that situation, but I mean, hey, we're all friends here. I'll be I'll be one hundred percent honest. I looked at her that first day, and I know this is really this is really corny. You said this is the girl I, I'm going to marry. I didn't say that, but I thought I looked at her. And I said, the two of us could be happy together. That was my thought. So I was uh-huh. like, wow. You know, that, you know, it's the only time that ever happened. So Usually if I walk in, there's a hot chick that I would be interested in. I would, like, crumble into a shell and, like, uh, trip over something and, like, uh, <laughs> drool on myself or something stupid like that. Or I'd go into a, a bunch of eye twitches. <laughs> okay. Well, that stuff all came later. You know, I think I... I, I but, but it, said, it worked but out. You said, you know, "Hey, we, you want to go out sometime?" She said, "Yeah." yeah well, the good for you, know, you we man. Went wow. out that next. We went out that. I I fed her. She was like a dog. You know, you feed her dinner, and she never went away. You know, really, huh? Feed, so <laughs> that's it. And that was. Can I quote you on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she listens she was, to this stuff with she me. She was you know, like I, a dog. I, <laughs> I like. We listen to the rock and roll geek show in bed. You yeah, know, I. I'm people, sure. <laughs> We do, you know. She, if it's an interesting program, well, she's, she's she not into it, all of it. If she makes it through an hour and twenty six minutes of the Chris Capel uh, co host. Uh, Chris Capel, what's her name? What's what's your wife's name? Oh, again? she's Nancy Capel. Nancy Capel, uh, y- your husband said you were a dog. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't say you were a dog. He said you were like a dog. No, I, I you wouldn't leave. That, <laughs> I've, I've said that, and you know, and where did you take her on the first date? Actually, that's funny. We went to – I don't know if you have this out there. It's probably a New York thing. There was a guy named Mario Perillo, and he used to have this touring Italy company. And it was Perillo Tours of Italy, and I think it was a local thing because he was around here. And I took her to an Italian restaurant, 
uh-huh. which is still there, called Columbus Park. Uh-huh. And we walk in, and who's sitting there at an Italian restaurant but Mr. Italy, the tour guy. And it's like, this has got to be authentic because this is the and guy they, that leads the tours to Italy. Oh, and, they, and that impressed her. I guess so. I mean, she that was 1999, and she hasn't walked out on me yet. So you remember what you ordered? I ordered the penny vodka because this was right when I had a job. It was right around the corner, <laughs> around from where I used to work. So I already knew the restaurant. Oh, you had you had your you you were a regular at the place. Yeah, I went there for lunch once in a oh, while, okay. and but she worked in this law firm. The job, not the job I found her at, but the next job, and. They had clients there like Peter Chris when he got divorced. And the funny story is well, around the married, office. They were marriage he, and family law. Yeah, in, in all sorts of um, like, you know, big lawsuits, you know, uh-huh. big stuff, you know, when people get injured and stuff. But he came in in his kiss outfit and makeup and they what? told him. He came, to in, tr- he came into the lawyer's office in his kiss makeup? Well, it was the seventies. She wasn't working there then. It was just the rumor. Why did he come the, into? The why did he come into his lawyer's office wearing his makeup? Well, the guy told him to go back home, take it off, and come back, and he did. I wonder why he, did he just get off stage or something? Oh, I think he thought he was a bigger deal than he was. So he's walking around the streets in his kiss of makeup. Stanford, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, he lived in. He's, you know, he lived in Connecticut he's, too. He wears his kiss outfit. On the, when he's not in, in on stage. Well, he probably thought it made him important or something. I don't know. Are that's, you serious? Is this a joke? No, that's a true story. <laughs> he walks into his lawyer's office wearing his kiss makeup. What a dumbass. <laughs> wow. That's the greatest and, thing I've ever heard. And one day I was there visiting her. I don't know if we were married or still going out. And it was middle of winter. Which... I just got, hold on. I can't, why, why would he walk into the fucking kiss office wearing his, or to the lawyer office wearing his makeup? <laughs> He's the cat man. He's Peter Chris. Was he losing it? Was he wasted? He must have, well, he, he had all sorts of problems. Yeah, sure. I, that's quite obvious. He's walking yeah. in with his kiss mate. Now, well, that I, wasn't his biggest problem. He was, Quit. He got divorced. He quit the band, and he, he quit, nothing ever happened. To not him. wait a minute. Not only did he walk in wearing his Kiss makeup, but he wasn't even in Kiss. <laughs> no, he was. He was. You know, right at the end of Kiss, right oh, okay. before he left. Oh, before he quit. When he divorced okay. that first wife of his. Okay, Beth. <laughs> but another time I went there. This is like in probably fifteen or eighteen years ago, or whatever, and. It was winter time, and all the cars in the parking lot were all covered with salt, and you know they're all white. And there was this Mercedes there that was just totally shined up, and it was perfect condition. And who was in there? But it was Michael Bolton. Oh, nice! Because he was getting sued for something for plagiarizing the Isley Brothers, and huh. <laughs> and one of the people there, her brother, was in a band. We'll play this the the next to last song. Why do you love me? Her brother was one of the guys in Garbage, and I got the CD, and I'm not that big of an alternative fan, but this is a slamming song, so if the board op is ready, it's the next to last song. I think it's number 15. All right, and this is the first and last time you will ever hear Garbage on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. What's the name of the song? Why Do You Love Me?
right, there you wow. go. Garbage. You See, like that's that, a rocking song. You can't you can't argue with that. Yeah, it was okay. It was fine. I like it was good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, all not right. a big not a big garbage film. It was it was as far as garbage songs go. That was that was that was pretty good one. Yeah, I didn't like their new album. I the one that came out this year. Yeah, I didn't stuff. listen to it. Didn't yeah you you didn't care. Not well, let, fan, let's, not, not a fan of the Butch Vig uh, production myself, but what do I know? Overrated, but but let's say our goodbyes. We'll play one song and get the hell out of here, as you say. <laughs> You know, right. What the hell? We're we're only an hour and now. Do you think? Uh, do you think? I say this to everybody when they co-host. Do you think you got your uh, hundred dollars worth for co-host? Oh, I got my hundred dollars worth if I didn't do this. Well, there you go. I mean, I think everybody should donate, and I'm not trying to kiss your ass or anything, but it's important to me. You know, I know you put your heart and soul in it, and you're not in it for money, but people should pay you. You know. There you go. I look forward to this. You know, it's it's. You know, you hear about, I mean, I got to meet you and I got to meet Chucky and I got to meet Don from the dog park <laughs> and I got to meet your dogs. But they're like, you know, but I'm like, I'm Facebook friends with Tim, the rock and roll runner, you know, everybody, become, and I, everybody becomes friends, brings people together. You know, I ask him running questions, you oh, know, really? and he comments on my Facebook posts, nice. you know, there you go. Look at there, you know, so, I mean, everybody should, you know, donate and, you know, cause it's entertainment. You put a lot into it. I I see what you'd put into it. What are you gonna do for your thousandth show? I'm gonna say goodbye. No. No, you're not. <laughs> uh you're, who, who knows? It's a long time away. It's at least probably a year or two away. Well, if you do the dog days, that 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 throws yeah, there, thirty in a row. There's supposed to be a uh twelve days of podcast and another dog days for December. You're supposed to do twelve 12 in the month of December. I signed oh, up. I signed up for it. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I may. You should you should get like a club and get all your musician friends and have like a big jam session and we all bring our instruments and we all just play. I would do that. Do that. I will I will so be there. I will fly out with my bass to California. All right. Which one will you bring? The Rickenbacker or the Jazz I would bring, bass? Yeah, I like that one the best. Um I just actually got it. Um, what model Rickenbacker is that? It doesn't look like an old, older one. It because no, the it's older ones weren't actually, black. The older ones weren't solid black. No, no, this is a the guy from the Smithereens, and I, I should really know his name, oh, but is I that don't. A signature. It's a signature model, yeah. A Smithereen signature Rickenbacker. Yeah, you know, and it's I found it at the West Coast or East Coast Music. I don't even know if the place is still there up in Danbury, Connecticut, and. I always um, liked the way Rickenbacker basses looked. I had one that was a there was a, a different model. It was a, it was like a three quarter scale. I thought it looked really cool, but I didn't like the way it sounded, so I got rid of it. I like wish a little I, too Chris Squire for you. I wish I wouldn't have got rid of it, but I. But this was didn't look like it wasn't a four thousand one or whatever you called those whatever the models those were. This was like a uh, six thousand one or something like that. It was like I looked that up. It was a smaller one. I don't know. It's don't quote me on six thousand. That's probably not what it is. But it was like a, it was a, a three quarter scale Rickenbacker, and I really liked it a lot. It looked super cool, but it didn't sound that great. So I, I traded it for a for something else. I, I always kick myself for trading guitars. Oh, you, you never get over it. It was a unique bass. You didn't see a lot of these Rickenbackers. It would probably be worth some money now, but I don't... I think I traded I, it for like a... Uh, I don't know what I traded it for, but I regret it. Oh, I have that. And I also have a Beatles Hofner bass, yeah. too, but the neck's all screwed up on is that, it, so I can't play it. It's a Hofner, or is it a, or a copy yeah, it's, of Hofner? Yeah, it, it's the real Hofner, what's but the screw, neck's all messed up. What's I just, necked up? Messed up? Was it twisted or something? Yeah, it's a little warped or something, uh-huh. so... I gotta. I mean, I just got that one, you know, tuned up and new strings and intonated uh-huh. and all that. So, um, you leave them on the stands or you put them in the case? Well, I leave that one out because you know I'm always picking it up and playing it. Uh-huh. I mean, I hadn't played in a bunch of years, not you know, and I played like a benefit concert. It was a year ago actually, and you know, I hadn't played out in many many years, and there was a benefit thing and i signed up and i got to play three songs and what it song? was fun what so songs did you play i played a hendrix song and two cream songs oh nice 
because it's you know that's it's stuff you can really you know sink your teeth into you know it's good 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 solid base stuff you know i'm trying to learn stuff the right way i'm not a natural at this so it's not like i'm looking for another career or ever thought i could be a professional musician but, I don't, you know, it's fun. I don't have any of my basses out of the case. I have the only guitar that I have that's out of the case all the time. It's hanging on a wall in my office is a uh, Hamer ES33 knockoff. Nice. That, I just have that hanging on the wall because if I if I have a, an idea in my head or if I whenever I learn songs, I just pull the Hamer off the wall and and learn the bass or learn the bass parts on this on the guitar. I have one on the wall. You can't see it. It's to the right of the Rickenbacker if you're facing it. It's a, it's a Telecaster. It's a Tele bass or guitar? It's a guitar. Oh, okay. Nice. I've got a couple guitars, but I'm not very good at that. I'm not very good at guitar either, but that's what I... Well, I, you're better than me. Play. I've heard you play on the show. <clears throat> anyway, I think, like I said, everybody should pay. Anybody who wants to friend me on... Facebook who's out there listening there's a couple a bunch of you already who have but feel free because all the people who post stuff on Facebook's really cool and I did spill my beer I, don't know if I you saw that. that I saw you walking around with a towel I thought you might have <laughs> that was beer. the beer spill there you go it was a tragedy that's, that's that you've christened it yeah um and I have a blog oh you music do blog I do I will I will uh, Self promote. Yeah, you better send me the link to that. Hold me. Oh. I'll send it to you now. It's it's very easy to remember. It's called Albums That Time Forgot. Now is the is is the Chris Capel copy or is it, excuse me is the Rock and Roll Copywriter podcast coming soon? I you know how they say you have a face for radio. I have a voice for blogging. Because you know a lot of people. A lot of people from the Rock and Roll Geek Show have started podcasts. Oh, but I mean, and I could. I've thought of it. Most of them, once they start their podcast, they stop listening to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Oh, that that's blasphemy. Well, they that's what they do. I download it on my phone and I listen in the car. Or we listen, if it's something interesting, my wife would find interesting i'd listen in the bedroom now how does she think it's interested she looks at the show title or she says oh it's an interview with somebody i'm interested in or no what? she's not interested we'd have no no similar taste in music so what 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 episode would make her want to listen how what what would grab her to make her want to listen to it the show when, title when you tell a funny story about don from the dog park or oh, something. so you'll say hey listen to this or, yes oh, okay I played her the Saluki bottle opener thing you did the other day. Oh, okay, cool. Was that that was a Mad at Dad, wasn't it? Well, you mentioned on both shows. Okay. I played her both. Yeah, tell her thank you for the for finding that. Oh That's yeah, cool. I will because yeah, she actually was looking for sconces or something around here, and she found that, and she sent me the link, and That's I ordered cool. it, and there you go. Oh, it was on eBay. Uh, she found it on eBay. I probably. Huh. Well, it's yeah, a she very, did find it on eBay. It's I'm, an I'm, I'm awesome a big bottle eBay. opener. I, I, you know, and I go to like state sales. That's one of my hobbies. I told I you my with. wife flipped out when she saw that, right? Yeah, you know that's awesome, and and I, I feel badly because when I was over to your house, she was under the weather and wasn't feeling well, and she kind of hibernated the whole time. <laughs> football game, and by the she way, like when football I, either. Well, I don't like the football either because it was not that interesting. Right. But I had actually gone mountain biking earlier that morning up in like Mill Valley in Sausalito. Uh -huh. And my flight was delayed on the way home because I had to run from your house to the airport. And we had a circle in Philadelphia, not land in New York because of the splizzard. And and it took me really 24 hours to get home. Wow. And bummer. And when I took a shower, there was still dirt in my hair from mountain biking. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say from my house. No, no, no. From <laughs> before I was at your house. And, um, yeah, that was definitely – it took a long time to get home. But So donate to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. It's You don't have to co-host. If you do, it's fine because I love the stories people tell and I love the stuff people post online, you know, and all their show reviews and this and that, you know, that – to me, that's good stuff, and, you know, I like it. Well, good. You know, and um, I'm Christopher Capel on Facebook. You can 
put me in the show notes. And, you know, if anybody listened to the show, feel friend, feel free to friend me on Facebook. Um, blog is albums that time forgot. And we'll play one more song and we'll get the hell out of here. And this right. is actually a group I saw open for the Rolling Stones like back in 2003. Oh, and by the way, Cheap Trick is my favorite. I've seen him 58 times. Oh, I know you, Mine right too. With you. you know, so we have that going for us. I, I didn't want to play that because, you know, I had some other stuff I wanted to play, but that will be next co-host. Okay. Um, the, the last favorite album that I really liked, and it's probably not up your alley, it's a band called Metric, and they're from Canada. Yeah, I don't know anything and, about Metric. Yeah, they they have a blonde singer. Um, you know, she's not as disturbed as Shirley Manson the Garbage, but she's got some good lyrics. The last album I didn't like as much, but the one that came out before it's called Synthetica from 2012 is just like every song on that is is great. It's kind of a little more poppy than I normally like and kind of keyboard heavy, but Let's go with this one. It's called Speed the Collapse from Metric from Synthetica. And listen to the drums. It's, they just are pounding. Okay. Thank you. 
right, Chris Capel. Thank you. I'm so, here. Thank you so much for for. Oh, thank you. No, thank you for all you do, and and I'm. It's really cool that you play the music live when we're doing this. You don't razor blade it in later. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. It's, well, I do know how to do it. It's just a pain in the ass, and I'll end up, I won't end up posting it for two weeks if I end up doing that. It no. took me. It takes me forever to edit the. Uh, w- when I edit music into a an episode, it takes forever. I would rather just do it on the fly than I can just post it. Which, by the way, I'll post this one tomorrow morning, probably. Oh, fun! All right, looking well, forward to it. And Chris- I texted you. The links, my oh, okay. blog, and my Facebook, oh, and my Amazon books. Buy my Amazon books. Oh, you have how you to's. Wrote, you wrote books on Amazon? Oh yeah. Look at you. They're all man. ebooks. Oh nice. You know. All that, right. Well, that's, that's great. That's how we make a living here. Well, if you think that you can do better than Chris Capel, which I don't which know how you can. Any, I don't know how anybody could. Chris Capel was a was a great uh, co-host. This is the longest show ever. This is two hours almost. Eh, Screw it. What are you going to do? And I didn't even get half of what I wanted to play or say. If you think you can do better than Chris Capel, send me a hundred bucks, motherfuckers. All right. (laughs) Send him a hundred dollars anyway. And I'll let you host the show. If you, by the way, if you send me, uh, there's a level on there. You can come to my house and I'll, I'll cook you dinner and, and, and give you beer. And I did that for Chris Capel. You did, but I took you to the Metallica concert. That's, that's true. That's that true. is true. That is and true. you bought me a beer. I'm sitting there with the great Michael Butler. He's buying me beer. And Chucky Life went, is good. Chucky went with us, but he sat somewhere else. Yes, it that's a, where I met him. That was a good show, actually. I had a good time. At the it was Metallica a very good show. show. And I liked your review of the album. Oh, yeah. That was not a bad album. I think it's a decent yeah. enough album. You know those guys put out like a music video for every single song on that album. Like the day it came out, they released music videos for almost every song on the album. That's that's pretty uh, ambitious, I think. They 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 went a little bit above and beyond what they had to do. Well, we have eight years to do it. I'm sure yeah, they have plenty of true. time. That's true. And they, it's so much cheaper now than it was. You know, you don't have the Wayne Isham directed videos anymore. You can have interns do your videos i guess yeah that's true that's why i'm not doing video anymore all right well chris capel thank you so much for thank coming you on. and uh when you come back to san francisco look me up we'll go to, we'll get together you come over to my house and have dinner and uh, i'll try to do a better job on the uh, you did a fine job you're so hard stuff. on yourself stop it <laughs> and you're bring the so wife neurotic. and kids bring the wife and kids and, and we'll, do people uh, tell you you're like woody allen or something uh no that that's who you remind me of. You know, okay. you're just got that Woody Allen thing going. And you're just so unsure of yourself. There you go. All right. <laughs> ah, taking a final sip of this uh, Tecate. All right, Chris Capel. Thank you so much. Friend. Thank you so much. A friend of the show and a friend of mine. And um, let me tell you, you can reach me rock and roll geek at gmail.com is the email. Area code seven zero six six two one rock. That's area code seven zero six six two one seven six two five. Leave me a show review, like Chris Capel leaves many show reviews, but he just emails it to me. Rock and roll geek at gmail.com. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Just talk in your phone, and you just email it to me. It's a lot better. It's way easier for me than having to record it from the Skype too. So, uh, and you can find this show at rock and roll geek dot com. Find me on the Facebook, r r Geek. Find me on the Twitter, r r Geek. Find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. And what's your Facebook again, Chris Capel? Give all your plugs again, Chris Capel. Okay, my blog is called albums at timeforgot.com. Facebook is Chris Capel, facebook.com slash Chris Capel, C-A-P-E-L-L-E. You look in Michael Butler's friends, you'll see me in there. It's under Christopher. I don't even remember how I set it up. It'll be a link in the show notes. Don't worry. It'll be a link in the show notes. And I sent you a link to my Amazon books. They're all like how-to on the computer. Um, They're cheap and fast reads, and they're damn good. All right. Well, thank you, Chris Capel, and we will talk to you uh, probably very soon, friends, because I already have a show um, ready to record soon, I think. I got a lot of of things I want to... um, talk about on the next show all right thanks friends and thank you chris capel i'll talk to you soon friend good night
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. <laughs> 